Romans chapter number 5, begin reading verse number 1, the great apostle Paul was inspired to pen these words, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would da even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we've now received the atonement. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good choir singing. Thank you, Lord, for a good Sunday school hour, good reports of the good jail services. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It shows us the way of peace, the way of joy, the way of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your mercy in sending your darling son to this world to go to a cross of Calvary and pay our sin debt. Uh, thank you for being the great God of glory, and thank you for being our God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us this morning. No telling the needs in people's hearts here today. Lord, you know them all. You know the heart. You try the reins of the heart. And God, I certainly pray that you'd speak to hearts today. I pray you'd edify your people. No doubt many of them have suffered some things this week. Some of them have uh, heartaches and stress and problems and pressures. Uh, some have uh, uh, wayward children or wayward loved ones. Some of them have uh, loved ones who are sick and afflicted. So, Father, I pray... You'd edify and encourage the saints of God this morning. Father, I certainly pray, uh, Lord, as Brother Adrian has already prayed, if there be anybody in our midst today that are strangers to the grace of God, they do not know you in the free pardon of sins, uh, I pray today would be the day they realize uh, Jesus loves them and died for them, uh, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave, uh, made a way for them to be saved from their sins. Uh, and I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray if there's somebody here today, uh, Lord, they're saved, but Lord, uh, they've not been what they should be. I pray today, uh, Lord, that would all get settled. Uh, they'd be found in the center of the will of God. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, we ask for your touch and your power today. Uh, we ask that, Lord, uh, you'd speak to every heart. Uh, help us, Lord, not to be hearers of the word of God only, but to be doers of the word. Uh, bless now, uh, and we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. Uh, it amazes me, uh, my dear friends, uh, how folks will get so excited uh, over a ball game. Now listen, I'm for sports. I love sports. I uh, love it all. Uh, don't like soccer too much. Uh, really not a big ice hockey fan. Uh, but listen, I love sports. Uh, I love the competition. Uh, I love everything about it. Uh, but it amazes me uh, how excited 
somebody will get over somebody hitting a ball uh, or throwing a ball uh, or running a ball uh, or shooting a ball. Uh, they'll paint their faces. Uh, they'll don the wardrobe uh, of their favorite team. Uh, they'll sit out in just terrible weather uh, and cheer on their team. Uh, they'll shout their lungs out uh, uh, when somebody scores uh, and somebody's victorious. Uh, but they look at us uh, that come to the house of God uh, like we're crazy. Uh, are you uh, uh, really uh, uh, looking at us that way? Uh, we are coming to celebrate the champion of champions. Uh, one day God sent his only begotten son uh, who left glory and stepped into the womb of a virgin maid, uh, was born into this world. Uh, uh, the God of glory became flesh. He became like you and I. Uh, he lived a sinless, perfect life. Uh, and one day he uh, uh, went up Golgotha's hill uh, and he laid down his life on the cross of Calvary uh, and he shed his blood to be our prepared Situation. Uh, and he took the law that no man could keep uh, and the handwriting of ordinances that were against us uh, and he nailed them to his cross uh, and he was buried uh, and he rose again the third appointed day. Uh, he conquered sin. Uh, he conquered death. Uh, he conquered hell. Uh, and made a way where sinners such as you and I uh, could hear about the gospel uh, and we could put our faith and trust in him uh, and we who deserve to die and go to hell uh, don't have to go to hell. Uh, we can be saved from our sins, uh, made child children of God uh, and we can rejoice in the fact that we are saved. Uh, they look at us uh, crazy because we dress up because uh, we come out to celebrate our champion because uh, we come out to worship uh, and if I shout my lungs out uh, don't look at me crazy because uh, Jesus means everything to me uh, that's not in my notes but I thought I'd throw that in huh? uh, but I want to look at this wonderful chapter and look at some of the things that Paul is saying now notice if you will the substantiation of the believer Look in verse number 1. The Bible says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Miss Annette just sang that song, I Know the Peace Speaker. Do you know this world seeks for peace? All my life I've heard them talk about peace in the Middle East. I even remember them signing peace treaties back in the 70s in the Middle East. But can I say there'll be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes back and sits on the throne of David. Uh, but you and I can have peace, uh, not peace as this world seeks. Uh, we can have peace with God. Uh, you realize uh, outside the grace of God, we are the enemies of God. Uh, we have no true peace. Uh, but when you come to trust in Christ, uh, you can have peace with God. Uh, how does that happen? Verse number 1 says, uh, Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what substantiates me uh, as a child of God uh, is I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and He saved me uh, and I have the peace of God in my soul. Uh, that word justified means that there is no charge against me. There is nothing that the devil can say, Brother Bob, uh, concerning sin uh, that sticks to me because Jesus saved me and forgave me of all my sin. Amen. That word justified means uh, just as if I'd never been a sinner. Yep. Right. Mm. Right. When God sees a child of God, a saved person, even though I'm still in this flesh, Brother Ron, even though this flesh is wicked and rotten and will do wicked and rotten things, and even though I fail the grace of God, mm, when God sees me, he sees the work that he's done in my soul. And he sees me as if I'd never, ever even been a sinner. If that don't excite you, I can't help you today. Uh, now, in your eyes, I may be nothing. But when it comes to God, because of my faith in Christ, I am substantiated. I am somebody. 
I not only want you to see that, I want you to see uh, wherein we stand as believers. Look at verse number 2. Um, by whom? By whom? Who, who is he talking about? By Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You see, I have access to the things of God through Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus Christ and what He's done in my life, I can stand wherein I stand in this hope that I have in the glory of God. What hope do you have? I'm not going to hell. I have eternal life. I have a blessed hope. Uh, what a blessing to have in this day and age. It amazes me, and the Bible talks about how the devil will blind the minds of them that don't believe. When you see everything going on over in the Middle East, my dear friends, this thing's a winding down. Do you realize prophecy is being fulfilled from the Scriptures right before our eyes? Do you realize the Bible makes it clear that one day all nations are going to turn against Israel? Now, look. All my life I've known people who didn't care for the Jews. But never at a point in my life have I seen people protest on college campuses and in the streets of America against the Jews. Never in my lifetime have I heard congressmen, congressmen stand up and politically absolutely rail on the Jews. We have congresswomen who fly Palestinian flags outside their office. Never in my life have I ever seen that. And my dear friends, this war, we're going to get drug into it. They didn't even tell you. They didn't tell you because our president released the funds back to Iran that the former president uh, ceased all their funding. And uh, he released those funds and gave them $6 billion. And they didn't even tell you that Iran was so thankful that they have been attacking some of our outposts and some of our soldiers over there uh, uh, since mid-October. And this past uh, uh, week, just a couple of days ago, we had some airstrikes on Iran. We're going to be right in the middle of it all, friends. Uh, listen, World War III is coming. You say, how do you know? Because the Bible calls it Armageddon. Now, here's the good news. The church is out of here seven years before Armageddon. The Lord Jesus is coming back for His people. Hmm? What a blessing to have that hope. I have that hope, and I can stand in that hope today. huh? You say, aren't you nervous? No, I'm not nervous about a thing, because I know in whom I believed in and persuaded He's able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. I'm not even preaching. Some of you are getting nervous. Notice the strength of believers. Look at verse number 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now, that's a hard thing. When you're going against tribulations and trials and problems and heartaches, and we can glory in that? How can you glory in losing a loved one? How can you glory in losing your job? How can you glory in losing your health? How can you glory in those things? Because I know there's a day coming when he's going to right all the wrongs. I'm going to a land of peace. I'm going to a land where there is no more sorrow. There is no more sickness. There is no more death. There is no... I'm going to that land... Uh, and so, therefore, I realize the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul writes that a few chapters later. But he says, we glory in tribulations. Amen. Why? Also knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Now, you know I'm not a patient person. Do not pray for me to have patience. I would highly recommend that you don't pray for patience. Because you've got to go through tribulation to get patience. But I am amazed, Brother Bob, that at the age of 60, I see things different than I did at the age of 20. Because I've been through some things. And I've learned to just wait on the Lord at times. Tribulations work with patience. P 
patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. I'm glad I'm not ashamed of the Lord. Because I have hope. Hmm? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see, I can endure all those things because the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. What a blessing. That's where I find my strength. My strength is not a source from this world. My strength is a source from the glory world, from the Lord Himself. His love and His presence in my life helps me to endure anything. Hmm. What a blessing. I could go into a lot of things I've had to endure. I've had to endure cancer. I've had to endure health problems. I've had to endure all kinds of things. But I've never endured any of them alone. Every time I've been operated on, they look at me like I'm crazy because my heart rate's about 50. I guess most people, their heart rate goes up when they get operated on. My blood pressure's always just fine. They don't understand that. But they don't understand. Long before I wheeled into that room, somebody was in there waiting on me. Hmm? Uh, we see the strength of the believers, but know the source that makes believers. Look at verse 8. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Jeremiah tells us God has loved us with an everlasting love before the time was ever recorded back in the alpha of time God looked ahead and saw what his creation would be and he chose to love us anyway Brother Daniel, long before you ever was, God knew you was coming and God chose to love you. Mm -hmm. Brother Clint, in spite of you and whatever sin you'd ever commit, God loved you. Mm -hmm. There's not a person, Brother Ray, that is breathing God's air that God doesn't love. Brother David, God proved his love. It's one thing for me to tell you I love you and then if I never show up when you have a need, I don't really show I love you. God proved his love to you, Jackson, when he sent his son to die for your sins. God loved you when you was a sinner. God didn't love you after you got saved and got all cleaned up and thought, boy, I love that boy. No, when you was vile and wicked and wretched, deserved to go to hell, God loved you. He sent his son to die for us because he knew one day we needed a Savior. He knew we'd come. He knew we would be born in depravity. He knew that we could never be holy on our own. And he knew we'd have to be saved from our sins. And the source that makes us a believer is the love of God who sent his son to bleed and die for our sins. I bless the name of the Lord. But then notice the salvation of believers. Look with me, if you will, verse number 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You talk about being saved. Folks say, what are you saved from? I'm saved from the wrath of God. Now, can I say God loves everybody, but the Bible also makes it clear that God's angry with the wicked every day. Brother Brian, when you was uh, living in depravity and you was at... Uh, 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 biker wannabe uh, had all the world's ornaments dangling off of you and all the sin of the world dangling off of you uh, God loved you but he hated your sin mm. the reason God wants to save us is he wants to make us vessels fit for heaven but he hates our sin can I say those who reject God Miss Courtney we're going to die in their sin and face the wrath of God. Hmm. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. But there's a place prepared for the devil and his angels called the lake of fire. And those who reject the love of God are going to end up in the lake of fire and pay for their own sins because they wouldn't let Jesus pay for their sins. Look what he goes on to say in verse number 10. For if we were enemies... By the way, we were enemies of God when we were in our sin because God hates sin. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God 
by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's why Jesus had to raise from the dead. Because everybody's going to die. But only he rose from the dead under his own power. And when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive eternal life. The sting of death is removed. And even though uh, 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 these bodies may die and be put in the grave, they're going to be raised in newness of life one of these days. Uh, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. It goes on to say this in verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Our sins have been atoned for. I'm thankful where it says in verse 9, much more than being now justified by His love, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. I want to preach with this thought this morning. I want to preach on it's great to be saved. Amen. It's great to be saved. Amen. I'm stealing that uh, phrase from Brother Sammy Filbert. He always says, it's great to be saved. And it is. It's great to be saved. I'll see Brother Sammy here in about a week uh, down there in St. Lucia. Brother Nodge, Brother Naren, I'll say hello to your mom and daddy. Tell them that you're homesick and you're sucking your thumb and you miss them, all right? I know that's not true, but that's what I'm going to tell them, all right? Uh, uh, but hey, it's great to be saved. Most people don't know what it is to be saved, but it's great to be saved. Uh, I'm not ashamed of being saved. I enjoy being saved. Uh, people say, oh, you uh, Christians are funny duddies. You never have any fun. I'm having the time of my life, Brother Ron. Uh, hey, I ought to be in hell, but I'm not going to hell. Uh, hey, why? Because I'm being saved. Uh, it's great to be saved. Uh, you say, uh, what does it mean to be saved? Uh, it means saved means I've been forgiven given up my sins. Uh, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 12, I write unto you, little children, uh, because your sins are forgiven you uh, for His name's sakes. Uh, Colossians 1, 14 says, uh, in whom we have redemption through His blood, uh, even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, listen, when Jesus died on Calvary, he paid for my sins. Uh, and that night I called on him and believed on the Lord and was saved from my sins. Uh, all my sins were forgiven. Uh, my past sins, uh, my present sins, uh, my future sins uh, were paid for at the cross. Uh, and when God looks at me, he no longer sees a sinner. Uh, he sees a child of God. Uh, I know it's a popular phrase. Uh, folks say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Uh, in God's eyes, I'm no longer a sinner. Uh, I'm a saint of God. Uh, what a blessing. It's great to be saved because uh, my sins are forgiven. Uh, I can go to bed tonight uh, not worry about not waking up because uh, my sins have been forgiven. Uh, hey, though they were scarlet, they were made white as wool. Uh, Jesus said his righteous red redeeming blood on Calvary. Uh, and when I called on him, uh, he did something supernatural. Uh, he took his shed blood, uh, which is on the mercy seat before the throne of God. Uh, and he applied mercy unto me. Uh, and he washed away my filthy black sin uh, in his righteous red blood. Uh, and I became white as wool. What a blessing. Uh, it's great to be saved. I look at folks who are in their sin, my heart breaks for them because they don't have to be. Because right. Jesus tasted death for every man. It's great to be saved because my sins are forgiven. What's it mean to be saved, preacher? It means I've been freed from bondage. The Bible says in John 8, 36, It's a son, therefore shall make you free. He shall be free indeed. I'm free from bondage. I used to be bound and chained to my old wicked life. Brother Adrian, I couldn't do enough good deeds to break the chain. I couldn't be good enough. Baptism wouldn't do it. Being church member wouldn't do it. Being religious wouldn't do it. Brother Chad... Uh, one of the most religious men of his day, Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night, and he saw the miracles Jesus was doing, uh, 
And he said, uh, We know thou comest from God. No man can do the deeds you do except he be of God. Uh, and Jesus looks at him. This man had the first five books of the Bible committed to memory. Uh, this man tithed of everything he owned. Uh, this man went to church every time the doors were open. Uh, this man was a religious man. Uh, uh, there was no guile found in his mouth. Uh, and Jesus looked at him and said, You must be born again. Uh, he said, Your religion won't save you. You need a new life. Uh, that religion's got you bound. Uh, your sins have you bound. Uh, hey, uh, we were in bondage uh, to something. Uh, some people have a bottle they're bound to. Uh, some people have a needle they're bound to. Uh, some people have a relationship they're bound to. Uh, but something had them bound. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus come to break the chains. Uh, I was on the oxen block of sin, uh, bound to my sin, uh, and there was nobody that could pay my sin debt. Uh, but Jesus came my way. Uh, third Saturday night of March in 1974. Uh, and that night I believed on the Lord, uh, and he broke my chains. Uh, and he set me free uh, and I'm free indeed uh, free to worship uh, free to serve uh, free to live uh, say preacher you have to go to church all the time no I get to go to church uh, hey preacher you have to read the Bible uh, no I get to read the Bible uh, preacher you gotta know I get to uh, I've been set free uh, and I've learned to worship in spirit and in truth uh, being saved, he sets you free. Mm. Before I got saved, I had a drug problem. I got drugged to church every time the doors were open. And I'd sit there, because that's what we did. Time you come along, we got rid of the old pews, got new pews. Them old pine pews, there was more than one of them had my initials carved into them. Let me ask you young men, how many of you carry a pocket knife? You got one on you? Anybody else? You young men need a pocket knife. If you don't have a pocket knife on you, you're a sissy. Get you a pocket knife. It don't have to be that big. You get you a pocket knife. If you want one, come see me. I'll get you a pocket knife. I got Fred one. I got Owen one. I'll get you a pocket knife. Now, if I catch you carving your name in the pews, I'm going to smack you. Because <laughs> that's what happened to me. I just sit there bored out of my mind. And when they'd sing slow songs, Brother Thad, I hated them. I hated every one of them. Especially if he's on two pages. Lord have mercy, it's slow. So. How many know that song, Farther Along? Yeah. Farther Along. I'm thinking, oh gosh, how long is this song going to take? Huh? You know, the only thing I liked about church was when the final amen was said. That was it. That's all I liked about church. If I had to go, I mean, you know, and I. I knew every, all, the, all the young people because I grew up with them, but there wasn't a pretty girl in the bunch. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> I can start naming names and you degree. This one girl had teeth so bucked they put her in braces and they put wires all the way around her head. I mean, that is the best, huh? I'm just telling you, I didn't like anything about church until I got saved. And then I was set free from the blinders that I didn't realize why I didn't like church. It was my sin. It was my nature. You see, the Bible says in sin did our mothers conceive us when we were born. We were born with a sin nature. And I was just doing what every sinner did. Sitting there bored in church. Till one night. The preaching started really dealing with me and making sense to me. Yeah. I remember asking my mama, what, what, does, what does Paul mean about when, he, when he's talking about being saved? And she took the Bible and showed me that next church service. It was like the Lord himself was speaking to me. Yeah. Yeah. I realized I didn't have what he was preaching about. 
And that night there could have been 500 people in the building. All Cincinnati could have been in the building. It wouldn't have mattered. I had to get to Jesus. And he saved me. He forgave me of my sins. And he freed me from the bondage that I had. Can I say, well, what does being saved mean? Being saved means you get adopted into the family of God. What a blessing to be a part of the family of God. People say, well, everybody's God's children. No. Some are of the devil. And they act like it. By the way, help me, Red. Why do all these people, these women our age, painting their hair purple and blue and green? And, grow up. Huh? Seen this woman? She had to be 65, had purple hair. Yeah, it was nice. Huh? What's up with that? I'm glad you shaved yours off. You know what it is? People just sinning. That's all they know. But try to be cool. Try to act like this. Let me help you something. If you're 60, you're not cool. Just ask any of these kids. And if you got a tattoo on your lower back when you was younger, when you're 60, it's going to be on the back of your thighs. You ain't cool. You ain't cool. But see, that's our whole mentality. We think we need to have things. We think we need to live to a certain address, make a certain amount of money, and do all these things to make us be somebody. You know what will really make you be somebody? Get saved. Amen. Then you become part of the family of God. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What a blessing to be in the family of God. Uh, when I got saved, I got born into the family of God. Uh, hey, when I got saved, I got adopted into the family of God. Uh, and one of these days at the marriage supper of the Lamb, I'll get married into the family of God. Uh, what a blessing to be a part of the the family of God uh, to have brothers and sisters in Christ I'm going to spend all of eternity with uh, around the throne of God uh, what a blessing that he said uh, he's going to prepare a place for us uh, and if he's going to prepare a place for us he will come again and receive us unto himself uh, he said in my father's house are many mansions uh, hey the Bible says it hasn't even entered in the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him what a blessing uh, I'd be a part of God's family hallelujah Amen. when Noah got in the ark him his sons and his sons wives eight souls and that ark was baptized in the wrath of God and when it landed and the waters were swayed and they opened up the door and come out that door Noah owned it all and child you may be struggling today but when the Lord blows the door off this thing, we're going to step off into glory. We're going to own it all because we've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, what a blessing to be adopted into the family of God. I know people never felt wanted in this world until they met Jesus. Became part of the family of God. Realized they had the greatest family on the face of the earth. God's family. What a blessing. Can I say this? Being saved means that I have fellowship with God restored. Amen. Now, listen, a minute ago I read you a verse where before we were saved, we were the enemies of God. You realize God made man in his own image out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Listen. The animal kingdom don't have a soul, but man does. And man's soul became a living soul, and the soul of man will never die. It'll spend eternity in one of two places, God's heaven or the lake of fire with the devil. But God made man, put him in a perfect environment, made him a woman, a helpmate, 
and blessed them and came and walked with them in the cool of the day every day. He literally saw God with his eyes and fellowshiped with God. God gave them one command not to eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. And they chose to eat of that fruit after being beguiled by the serpent, the devil. And when they chose to sin, Brother Donald, sin passed upon all men, and death passed upon all men. We all have sinned. But also, Brother Bob, that day, fellowship with God was broken. Now, God is around us and even here in our presence through the Holy Spirit, but we can't see Him because these natural eyes became blinded to the spiritual realm. But when I got saved, my fellowship with God was restored. He took up His abode in me, but now I have access to talk with Him. Listen, there's religions that say you've got to talk through a priest to have your sins forgiven and talk to a priest to have everything. But I'm glad the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, Brother Bob, Christ Jesus. I don't have to, Miss Billy, go to some man and talk to him for him to talk to God for me. I go right to Jesus. What a blessing to have that assurance uh, because I have fellowship with him. I've already talked to him this morning before we got here. Uh, had a good time talking with him. Uh, I have fellowship with God. He walks with me and talks with me. Uh, hey, throughout my course of my day, I get to talk to the Lord. Uh, he talks to me through His Word. Uh, I talk to Him in prayer. Uh, but through His Spirit, uh, He'll also lead me and direct me and guide me and give me peace that passes understanding. Uh, I have fellowship with Almighty God. What a blessing. You say, give me some verses on that. I'm glad you asked. Again, we were at enmity. We were the enemies of God. James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Romans 8, 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Ephesians 2 says this in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus... Ye who sometimes were far off, we were the enemies, are made nigh. We've been brought into fellowship by the blood of Christ. Uh, uh, for he is our peace, who hath made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us, uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, uh, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, uh, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, uh, having slain the en enmity thereby. Uh, 1 John 1, 3 says, says, uh, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, uh, that ye also may have fellowship with us. Uh, and truly our fellowship is with the Father uh, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, when he died on Calvary, uh, he broke the enmity. Uh, he broke the ordinances. Uh, he broke everything uh, uh, that caused us not to be able to fellowship with God. Uh, and when I got saved, uh, that fellowship was restored. Uh, and I get to walk with Almighty God through the Spirit of Christ. Uh, what a blessing. I'm glad I'm saved. It's great to be saved. And then I thought about this. It's great to be saved. How do you be saved? What, what do you get when you get saved? In being saved, my future is secure with everlasting life. Nowhere in the Bible do you find anything about the next life for a child of God that it doesn't mention eternal life or everlasting life. The Bible says in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And of course, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I say it's great to be saved. I could go on for hours on how it's great to be saved, how God hears and answers prayer, how His blessing and His touch in our life, even in the most tumultuous and 
and, and terrible of times. You can have peace beyond this world's recognition and, and understanding. God is wonderful. I have no sad tale to tell. I have lived a charmed and blessed life because I know the Master. There's, it's just great to be saved. Hmm? As I see things winding down, this world's spinning out of course like the Bible said it would, I see so many that's not ready to meet God. And I say it's great to be saved. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can be saved. Huh? Listen, I got saved. I was ten and a half years old. If I could do it all over again, I'd have got saved even earlier. Because there's nothing like being saved. Listen. You say, preacher, how can you be saved? I'm glad you ask. There's just three little basic things you need to know in order to be saved. First of all, one can be saved by admitting they're not saved. There's a lot of people, Brother Ron, thinks they're going to make it to heaven just because they're a good person. A lot of people, Brother Ron, thinks they're going to make it to heaven because they went to church, because they got baptized, and because they knew a preacher, because they didn't murder anybody. I, I remember on visitation one time, Brother Adrian, years ago, uh, Brother Paul Thompson, he's in heaven. He and I was out and Brother Pittman sent us to go witness this fellow and we got to witnessing to him and he tried to tell us he knew he was going to heaven because he worked the job for 40 years and never missed a day. I've got one better than that. Brother Ray and I was in Owenton one time stopped and witnessed to a lady on her, on her front porch and she told us she was going to heaven because a butterfly landed on her. Remember that? That sounds silly. But people are trusting in things that will not save them. In order to get saved, you've got to realize you're not saved. And the Bible says this. Now listen, we were all in that boat. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible goes on to say all of our righteousness, the best life you could ever live if you gave every dollar you had to the poor and you did all great works all the time. The Bible says your righteousness, my righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. In the sight of God, filthy old nasty rags is the best we could have presented to Him. But see, God accepts holiness. And we couldn't be holy. He gave us the law to show us we couldn't keep the law. We can't even keep the Ten Commandments. We can't even keep, thou shalt not bear false witness. We come out of the womb, liars. My little precious granddaughter's seven months old. She'll start screaming. There's nothing wrong with her. She just wants attention. I mean, she knows she's not hungry. She don't need a diaper change. She, she's perfectly fine and healthy, but she just wants attention. We were born liars. We couldn't even keep that one. We couldn't be holy in ourselves. There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse number 12 in our text says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I preach many of funerals, Brother Peter, and they say, Why did my loved one have to die? Everybody dies because sin came into the world. And I say, even saved people, they lay their body to rest. But they died out to sin, and they have eternal life. And can I say, you need to admit you're not saved. You need to admit you're a sinner. That you can't save yourself. You can try, and you can try, and you can try, but you'll never save yourself. How can one be saved? You need to admit you're not saved. Then you need to acknowledge that Jesus is the only means of salvation. There are people trusted in Buddha. There are people trusted in Muhammad. There are people trusted in all kinds of yoga positions and all kinds of Buddhist type stuff and all kinds of mental type stuff. There are people trusted in religion. There are people trusted in baptism. There are people trusted in Mary. There are people trusted in all kinds of things that will not save them. You must acknowledge that Jesus is the only means of salvation. Look again at verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Does it say Muhammad died for you? No. Does it say Buddha died for you? No. Does it say that Mary died for you? No. 
Does it say the Dalai Lama died for you? No. Who died for you? Christ died for us. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, the Apostle Paul, who was the chief of sinners by his own testimony, he said this, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, speaking of Jesus, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Religion says there's many ways to heaven. Jesus said there's only one way to heaven. He's the only way. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way you can be saved is by acknowledging you're a sinner and acknowledging Jesus is the Savior. And there's no other way to be saved but by putting your faith in Him and what He did on the cross of Calvary that he was buried and rose again. Can I say, you need to admit you're a sinner. You need to acknowledge Jesus as the only means of salvation. And then finally, most importantly, you've got to ask Jesus to save you. Hmm? Well, I joked about Christmas presents earlier. Somebody could buy you the greatest gift. I like those car commercials where they come outside and they got a red bow sitting on a car, Lexus or something, you know. Somebody could buy you the greatest gift. I really like the one where the guy buys a car and a truck and she wants the truck. You see him go, oh. But if you don't receive the gift, what good is it? If you don't unwrap it and make it your own, what good is it? Colonel, that sweater they buy you, if you don't unwrap it and put it on, what good is it? It's really not your gift, is it? That car with the bow on it, if you don't take the keys and hop in the thing and take it down the road, what good is it? Well, if you know that you're a sinner and you know Jesus is the only means to save you and He's a free gift of salvation, if you don't receive Him, He's no good to you. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, though that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Here it is. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Luke 8, 38, he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. In order to be saved, you've got to ask Jesus to save you. Listen, it's great to be saved. I have zero sad tales to tell about being saved. It's great to be saved. I wish everybody that was saved enjoyed being saved. Sometimes people let things in this world get in their life and they can't enjoy the fullness of God. But can I say it's great to be saved. It's great to have the hope of eternal life. It's great in knowing regardless of what goes on in this world, heaven is going to be my home. I've said all that to say this. Are you saved? So you're the only one who can answer that. I can't look into your heart. I don't know. It's between you and God. Are you saved? If you're not, you can be. It's very simple. All you have to do is ask the Lord to save you. Acknowledge that you need to be saved and ask Him to save you. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. That's a big fancy word. That we're going to invite you to come and trust the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Say, preacher, I really don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Now listen, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to do anything to try and draw you. If you need to be saved, you need to come get saved. Listen, 
I told you, that night I got saved, I don't care if all Cincinnati was there, I'd have jumped over everybody to get to Jesus because I needed to be saved. If you need to be saved, you can be saved. I know what the devil does. The devil says, well, what will all these people think of, you, of me? I'll tell you what this crowd will think. They'll be excited for you because they once sat where you're sitting. They know what you're feeling. They know the excuses you're offering why you couldn't get saved today. But one day they came to end all that and they said, I just need to be saved. And they trusted Christ and they got saved and he changed their life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Remember I told you I hated them old slow songs? After I got saved, I loved them because I started listening to the words and they meant something to me. Remember I said I got drugged to church? I didn't have to get drugged to church. I wanted to drag other people to church. I wanted them to hear what I heard. Huh? Greatest thing that ever happened to me. Listen. God will save you and he'll change your life. He'll give you peace and joy and love and strength you didn't even know you had because you didn't have it until you got saved. Why don't you come and trust Christ today? You can be saved today and he'll change your life. And there's nothing like being saved. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While he picks out a song, some are coming to pray. Some are coming to pray. If anybody's here today unsaved, they'll get saved. But if you need to be saved, why don't you come? Why, folks are coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for helping us from the word of God today. Now, Lord, you know, I don't know anybody's heart here, but, Lord, you know everybody's heart. And, God, if there's somebody here not saved, I pray the sweet Holy Spirit through cords of love would begin to speak to their heart. Help them to realize it's not the preacher trying to save them. It's you trying to save them. And help them realize they need to be saved. The Bible says that now, today, is the day of salvation. Help them to come, put their faith in Christ, and be saved. Lord, forgive their sins. God, break the chains of bondage. God, give them that fellowship. Give them that hope of eternal life. God, do a work in their heart and life, even this very moment. God, I pray... You'd put a hedge about us now. We know that sorry, no good devil. And even the flesh fights against the Spirit of God. But God, I pray folks would come and put their faith and trust in the Lord. Have your will and way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.